All right, good afternoon. Welcome. Not our usual spot, is it? What we got here is a, a group camp for my ra radio club. And as usual, I'm doing the cooking. And I thought I'd do something for you guys that I have never done before on camera. I'm gonna bake a loaf of bread in the Dutch oven. Yeah, you know, it's a usual thing. Anybody can do it, right? Uh, it, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's been a couple of years since I've done this. So if I make a mistake and it comes out black, you're gonna find out. Coming right up. One teaspoon of salt, three cups of flour, two teaspoons of dry yeast, three tablespoons of sugar, and a little extra flour to use for getting everything floured up so you don't stick. That's all it is. Pretty simple stuff. I'll bring you in so you big enough to do the job. Three cups of flour. If I can get the bag to open. Three cups of flour. One teaspoon of salt. This might be a little bit more than a teaspoon. Two hours later. One teaspoon of salt. So we'll need tablespoons now, not teaspoons. One, two, and that's for the yeast. They have to, the yeast has to have something to eat. Now yeast, this is active dry yeast. We'll need two teaspoons of this and this has to be mixed separately from the flour mixture. You'll see here in just a second, I'm gonna cut and <clears throat> run over and get the bowl that I forgot and come back and you'll see how this gets done. Coming right up. Okay, we have the bowl. Now, we're gonna put D mead, it doesn't really matter, water. Maybe half a cup. Doesn't have to be a lot. And remember, yeast is a little living creature, so we gotta feed it. That's where the sugar comes in. One more tablespoon of sugar to go in the water to feed the yeast. Now the thing to remember about baking bread is it's all about the yeast. If you take care of the yeast, the bread will come out just fine. But yeast is a sensitive creature. It doesn't want to be too warm or too cold. Uh, ideally, you want the yeast to be basically uh, barely warm. You want, if, if you put your hand in warm water and it's just comfortably warm where you can leave your hand in it, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 110 degrees. That's the temperature of the water you want to use for your yeast. If it's body temperature or less, if you use cold water, it'll kill the yeast. If you go above about 110, it'll kill the yeast. It wants to stay just lukewarm. This bottle of water has been out in the sun for almost an hour, so it's nice and warm. It should be just fine. Oops, there's bugs in here. I can't imagine where they came from. I'm obviously camping. There's bugs in there. Okay, two teaspoons of yeast done separately from the bread dough. There's a reason for that. One, two. Give it a little stir to mix it up. Now, once you've done that, you take this yeast mixture and the water and just set it off to the side for now. 
and come back in 10 minutes. You notice it's sitting out here in the sun where it'll stay warm? That's the idea. So we'll give it about 10 minutes and we'll come back. And it hopefully, if it's done right, it should be all puffy and uh, look foamy on top. That's how you know that the yeast is proofed or working. So we'll give that some time and we'll come back. Okay, through the magic of video editing, it is now 10 minutes later. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but you see that the yeast is kind of foamy, like beer. That tells you that the yeast is proofed, it's working, it's alive, and I can tell by holding the bowl that it's still nice and warm. So now we're going to put this mixture in with the flour. Make sure we get it all. And at this point we're going to add one cup of warm water. Again, it's been sitting out in the sun. And this bowl has been sitting out in the sun. So it's all about keeping the yeast warm and happy. If you put everything in a cold bowl, the yeast won't work. If the water's too cold, the yeast won't work. If it's too hot, if it's 110 degrees out here and this thing's too hot to touch, it won't work for you. So you need to keep your water and the, everything you work with, the flour, everything to be just a little bit warmer than body temperature. All right, you see, it's a uh, nice squishy dough. It's all one piece now. And at this point, you got to be patient. It's time to wait. I'm going to stick a towel over top of this, leave it here in the sun for an hour. And it'll rise up to be about the top of this bowl. And then it'll be ready to turn out here onto the table, knead. We'll knead it for five whole minutes after it comes out then put it in the, the Dutch oven and it'll be ready to go. So, again, this is not necessarily what I would call uh, backcountry cheater stuff, because this takes too long. Because this whole process of making bread is going to take you a couple of hours. So don't get in a hurry. It'll be fine. Just make sure your temperatures are right, your measurements are right. And it'll all come together, and eventually, you'll be surprised when you pull that towel off that it's going to be how big it is. That'll be next. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, so I wanted to come over here and show you. After we punched all that bread down and set it in there, and it was just a little ball again, this is what it looks like now. It's ready to go, so we're going to bake it now. About 35 minutes or so at 350 degrees, and we'll be golden, literally. This is not bread. This is peach cobbler. And I didn't make that one. That's Captain Wrongway that did that one. So if you're drooling, you can thank him. Okay, off we go. 
Okay, as you can see, it got dark. Remember I said you had to be patient making bread? Well, it takes about two and a half hours. Yeah, we started at about 5.15, and it's now about 7.30, so it's been about two and a half hours, and it's done. We are ready to take this off the heat, let it cool for a few minutes, and give it a cut. And once that happens, we'll have our, uh, well, what, what do I call that? I guess it'd be our uh, money shot where I cut this bread for you. That'll be about, oh, five or ten minutes from now. Okay, stand by. For you, it'll be quick. <coughs> All right, as you can see, we have bread. It's ready to cut. Now, this is artisan bread. It's not going to be soft and squishy like home, like bread you get from the store. It's got a crust on it. So let me cut this. There you go. Nice, soft, homemade bread. All it needs now is butter, and I'm about to go take care of that problem right now because butter's over there. And once I have this in my hands, I'm going to go sit down and enjoy the football game between Boise State and University of Texas, El Paso. We're all sitting around here on Friday night. We've had way too much supper. Now we're watching the football game. Great way to spend an evening. Enjoy this. Give it a shot, you'll like it, but you gotta be patient. It's gonna take you two to three hours to get all this done, but it's worth the wait. If you had smell o vision right now, you'd all be drooling. Okay, I'll see you guys out there. Have a good evening.